Pay 200k to feel like a bus driver. The Range Rover experience. I have my private bus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest review with Aziz Drives. And today we are driving a Range Rover, Land Rover Range Rover, or AKA Land Rover Range Rover Vogue. So there's a couple of things we need to talk about and especially how this car came to life because you know about the Range Rover Land Rover Defender, you know about the Land Rover Range Rover Sport and you know about the Land Rover Range Rover Vogue. Okay, the model line is very complicated so I will explain at least for this car how it came to life. So uh, they started in 1970 and they brought out a car that shouldn't be a utility vehicle like the other Range Rovers from that time, or Land Rovers, better to say. So they brought out the Land Rover Range Rover, and this is the ultimate SUV that they have, still to this day. First generation was built from 1970 up until 1994, man. 24 years of the same car, imagine. So it was a massive success and it didn't have any competitors. It was the first one in its segment. The G-Class was still a utility vehicle. It came a, a little later in the segment. So this was considered the first luxury SUV car. And the only competitors that Range Rover took was the S-Class and the 7 Series. So those were the benchmarks and they built an SUV, S-Class for example. So luxury car that is in an SUV form. Very, very interesting actually. The second generation was built from 1994 up until 2002. Very interesting also because it changed a lot of the owners. It was first owned uh, by the British government, then was, uh, it was owned by BMW somehow, then a uh, Jaguar came in. So uh, very interesting. A lot of stuff going on back in the back story of that. And then the third generation came out from 2002 up until 2012. That car was then called the Land Rover Range Rover because they split two cars, the Land Rover Range Rover Sport and the Range Rover that we have today, the Vogue. And this car is the fourth generation which came out from 2012 up until 2022. And in 2022, they presented the latest one, which is again, uh, which has a BMW engine again. So it had a BMW engine in 2002 and now in 2023 it still has a BMW engine, very interesting, but between those times it was all a bu bunch of stuff, Jaguar engines and all of that crap, Tata engines, now we are sitting in a car that is still kind of a Jaguar engine. Talking about this specific car, it's the Range Rover SD V8, which means we have a V8 engine, diesel, 4.4 liter, 339 horsepower, 740 newton meters of torque, able to accelerate from 0 to 106.9 seconds. So that is very, very good. And we're going to find out if that holds true. What is also very interesting, they say the car should produce 8.5 liters to 100 kilometers. I can't believe that. I can't believe that because this is a V8 and I'm, I think it's going to be about 10 to 12 liters which is not that bad considering this car has 2.5 tons. And another special that this fourth generation car had is it shares supercar DNA. Yes, I said it. It shares supercar DNA. Why? Because it uses a monocoque. Never heard about it, right? It uses a monocoque unlike the third generation. This saves 150 kilograms of weight just with the monocoque. Very interesting, but that's everything that it shares with a supercar, except of this Meridian speaker here that I saw in a McLaren. So that is great. That is okay. It is holding a little bit more to its promise of making this still a utility vehicle. So very good. What I don't like about Range Rovers is just one simple thing. They are depreciation monsters. This car will bankrupt you, man. If you thought it was a good idea and you were going to get a bunch of girls with that car, you are mistaken, my friend. This car is not a risk car. It hasn't a lot of risk. This is a gentleman's car. It is just here for you to travel, go to London, England, go a little bit off-road, bring your family to a nice picnic. That's about it. 
some people go to hunt with those cars and that's it man that's it but if they are hunters they take a defender so you're not going to have a lot of risk with it but it's a good family car and that was the purpose okay so chicks will not love you because of it but it will bankrupt you why because those cars come out for around 180,000 bucks okay so you can pay up to 200k and eight years later uh, later it's worth 30 to 40k this one around 45 to 50 it's catastrophic it's like the 7 series in s classes it's just a depreciation monster that is also something that it shares with those luxury brands it's catastrophic it feels a little outdated the screen is not really nice uh, the climate controls okay th those are functional buttons that's that's nice the leather and the smell and the feel is very nice but it's going to bankrupt you what i like about the range rover is a very special thing while driving it has a it has an uncomparable style of driving so when you when you never drove a, a range rover you won't get what i'm telling you but when you drive a range rover it has a very interesting feeling and a different comfort than cars than other cars the air suspension the drivetrain the driving modes of Range Rover and all of that it does it, it is really it is a little bit different than what you would expect from an SUV to be it's very comfortable it's very silent but still so mighty you see I have this second arm handle here where I can just rest my arm on I have the armrest here you know there's a bunch of stuff that you don't have in other cars but especially the feeling of the steering wheel how it accelerates how it turns in how it shifts the gears it's very very interesting I, I really can't tell you another car that feels that way but just as you're sitting inside of it you suddenly feel like you're the boss a very strange feeling not really explainable in words but more when you're just doing it yourself it's very very interesting never experienced that in in another car than the Range Rover it has this galant kind of style this elegance to it you know when you're turning into a corner when you're accelerating it really feels different talking about acceleration I think we should stop here put it in sport okay and then foot on the brake left foot on the throttle pump a little bit and go yeah typical diesel 4000 rpms and there was a hundred isn't really fast shifts at 3900 rpms actually never heard that before or never seen that before usually they go about to around four and a half thousand very interesting but uh feels solid man and it is a v8 you know it's a v8 you don't really feel the v8 and you don't really hear it let me open the window maybe we can hear this diesel v8 a little bit more let me just see if i can do something to hear that so let's pump it here you know it, it is mighty it is mighty it has a it has something you know it has kind of an interesting vibe yeah it lacks a little bit in lower rpms but once it goes it really it really pushes forward holding around the corner ah, it's not the fastest we are already in sport we can lower it a little bit let's see oh this doesn't feel very comfortable <laughs> It really doesn't feel that comfortable, man. Feels a little bit strange around corners, but uh, yeah, w I wouldn't actually want to drive this car 200 kph. It tops out at 210 kph anyway. It, 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 it's so strange to explain this. It has just a different feeling. No, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's not that fast actually. Why the fuck would you put a V8 petrol engine in a car like this? Explain it. Explain it so I understand. Why would anybody put a V8 in an SUV? Okay, if it's a diesel, if it has the purpose of pulling a thousand newton meters or whatever, pulling stuff, you know, a V10 diesel, a V12 diesel, I can, I can argue with that. I can understand it. But why would you put a sports car engine in cars like this? 
Why would you put the Jaguar F-Type R engine in a Range Rover? I don't understand. For God's sake, I don't understand. Why? It uses a lot of fuel. It sounds ridiculous and it's going to be slow. So all the three things that I don't want in a, in a SUV are going to happen. I don't know what you expect when you buy a G63 AMG. Why the fuck would you buy a G63 AMG? Explain it. Explain it so I understand. If you buy a G500 and it will be a diesel or a G350 diesel, I can fully understand. You know, it doesn't use a lot of fuel. It has a lot of newton meters. It has a lot of power. It can pull stuff. But other than that, I don't understand it. What are you trying to do with those cars? Are you going to track them? It's really, I don't understand that thought behavior. So I think this is the right choice to go. Buy a V8 diesel. It can do everything. And I mean, whether you drive this or a G63 AMG that is also limited at 210 kph, I, I really cannot understand why somebody would choose the G63. I don't. I don't understand. It drives shit. It looks good. It looks good. It has a nice look. But it drives shit. This at least feels comfortable and has space. Leather all over the place. So uh, that's just my opinion. I wonder what you say about it. Make sure to write in the comment. I think we should try it a little bit off-road. We can't go off-road, like really off-road, off-road. But we can go a little bit through forest roads. Let's see how that feels there. So you have a bunch of driving options that you can change it to. You have rock mode, you have ice mode, you have sand mode, you have a bunch of stuff. But I would just choose auto, to be honest. I mean, it does it really itself. You can, you can, you can just drive through here. And I mean, this is where a Range Rover really shines. You know, it really shines because it feels so safe and comfortable, even though we're driving through, through whatever roads, to, you know, those, those forest roads. I mean, this is just very nice to experience. And it's safe for your family. You pick them up, you bring them to a nice picnic, you raise the car up a little bit so it doesn't scratch the bumpers or anything. That is, that is the main, the whole thing about it. That's the whole thing about that whole experience. You bring him on your, on your, on your range, as you can see here, with those, those nice, beautiful horses. Hello, horse. And that is also a nice thing with the Range Rover because here is a little spot I can turn so i will do that forest road it's a big car but it's an off-road car you see that that is the whole thing of range rovers stop here turn them in a forest man duck just put in auto and you have also a mode when you press it it is going it's the HDC mode so it it will slow the car down for you it will kind of take over the acceleration and the braking so you don't exceed a certain kph and everything holds you well going downhill this is especially for deep downhills 10 to 15 percent or maybe even 20. i don't need that now because this is basically a very easy road beautiful horses and that's about it that's about everything we can talk uh, uh, about with a Range Rover, man. This feels very nice. I mean, look at that. It's going to be dirty after it, but this is the whole purpose of a Range Rover. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you. Check out the exterior and interior drive and see you on the next one. Goodbye.